Good morning. It's Thursday the 12th of November and we've had so far one full week of our second lockdown of the year. My name's Tessa and I'm one of the licensed lay ministers in this parish. As you may know, we're following the diocesan idea of a month of prayer and are using the Psalms to help us with that. Today we're looking at Psalm 26. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity, and I have trusted the Lord without wavering. Prove me, O Lord, and try me. Test my heart and mind, for your steadfast love is before my eyes, and I walk in faithfulness to you. I do not sit with the worthless, nor do I consort with hypocrites. I hate the company of evildoers and will not sit with the wicked. I wash my hands in innocence and go around your altar, O Lord, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and telling all your wondrous deeds. O Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. Do not sweep me away with sinners, nor my life with the bloodthirsty those in whose hands are evil devices and whose right hands are full of bribes. But as for me, I walk in my integrity. Redeem me and be gracious to me. My foot stands on level ground and in the great congregation I will bless the Lord. I think this psalm can grate on modern sensibilities a bit. It's full of what the psalmist has done, how good they're being, and how they're not like those sinners over there. I think these days we're rather more used to thinking of ourselves as the sinners and begging for forgiveness, rather than shouting our own praises. So it can be hard at first glance to see how this can lead us in our prayers. However, I think there is a thread running through this which we can hopefully pull on to lead us somewhere more fruitful. And I think that thread is a feeling of, of yearning on the psalmist's part. O oh Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. The psalmist is yearning for the presence of God and I think he's probably a bit unsure if all the works he's doing is going to be enough. He's reciting all his goodness to reassure himself that he's worthy of God's attention but he still needs to plead with God. Do not sweep me away with sinners, nor my life with the bloodthirsty. Although he's following all the law, he knows that he's still in need of God's mercy. And maybe there's something in there as well about recognising that it is only through God's mercy that he's able to follow the law at all. What about us? Do we yearn for the presence of God? Are we aware of our need for mercy and the graciousness of God in helping us through our daily lives? We know that we can do nothing on our own account to make us acceptable to God. It's purely the grace of God and the sacrifice of Jesus that enables us to even approach him. So maybe our prayers today could be asking God to open our hearts to him, to inspire us to yearn for his presence and to thank him for his grace and mercy to us. As you go into this day, here are some thoughts about what else you might pray for. You could pray for the day and its tasks, for the world and its needs, which at the moment are many, and for the church and her life, particularly during lockdown. And today, in particular, we're encouraged to pray for the NHS and for other key workers.
May you journey this day in prayer and in the grace and love of God.